this is Aurora with Supercharged Science and today we're going to be doing some electrostatic experiments. Um, I just wanted to say hello and if you enjoy what you see today and you want more, just go to superchargedscience.com slash easy. Like, wow, that was really easy <laughs> for my kids to understand science better than I do and explain it back to me. So we are going to do a couple of quick experiments just using everyday things. This is a paint stick or if you have a meter stick, you can use that. You need a balloon and a spoon, you know, like one of those large serving spoons. The larger, the better. You just need the curvature on the top there and it stays put really nicely. It's not like a ball will roll off the table. Um, and speaking of which, if you have a ping pong ball, that's great. If you have like, um, you know, those bubble solutions, that's fantastic too. Um, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, where do you get all your science ideas? And um, I, a number of people said, you know, I've done some of them, but there's some that I've never seen before. And fortunately, um, those come from working with kids, uh, come from me, but they also come from really old books. And I brought a couple to show you. I actually did a whole separate thing just on books um, in my library. And what's really cool is some of these books that we've, I've actually contacted the authors of, um, you know, they're out of print or they're hard to find, but they have really valuable information. And we've gotten permission, I've gotten permission, to use their material, publish their stuff on our site, as well as make videos that go with it. And so we've done that with Alternative Energy, we've done it with a number of uh, different um, units in our in in our in my online science program and so that's super cool too so you don't you know, just throw the baby out with the bathwater you know it's like oh it's 20 years old you can't use it anymore um you know that's not true a lot of great stuff is actually in these older books now the one i want to highlight today this is called edison etc really hard to find it's by a um, company called wild goose and i don't know if they're still around i know they for a while they published just one page at a time you could buy a page for like 99 cents or something but you couldn't buy the whole book anymore um what is really cool about these books that i really like this one we'll do another time this is called bernoulli's book and you can see on the back they've um, they published a bunch of them and what they did is they're a really cool a uh, really cool company they created science hands-on science labs for teachers and so you could look through these books and go, oh yeah, I'm gonna teach this lab, this lab, and this lab today. And a lot of it uses everyday materials. Ha, <laughs> go figure, just like our program does, right? Um, and so, for example, um, the couple of them are actually, I don't know if they're from here or not. Um, they have a couple of them that are. And, um, you know, all they're using is bits, bits of paper and balloons and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, the point isn't to sell you on the book. The point is to let you know that there's a whole bunch of a wealth of information out there. You don't have to, you just got to know where to go look. It's like being hungry and going grocery shopping. You get totally overwhelmed, right? You ever buy like way too much food when you're hungry? <laughs> so I know I have. So the point is if you go in there and you're not hungry and you've already got your list in advance, it's easy to find what you want. And so there's a ton of information out there about how to teach, how to teach science, how to teach it well, and hopefully you want to combine all those elements and just find that one way that does that. Um, so anyway, I wanted to show you how to do a quick experiment today. So if you know anyone who is interested in doing electrostatics and wants to do um, electricity experiments, go ahead and let them know that we're going to do one right now in like two minutes. Um, send them a quick, a quick blip and whatever... Uh, communication method you like best um, so they will be able to see this as we do it live and that way they can ask questions and get back answers right like right away I'll ask answer any question oh by the way that reminds me um, so this is kind of the beginning where, where the people start to look for curriculum for next year and this is also where we start to take a look at what curriculums uh, we still need to develop and so if you have an idea if there's something like oh my gosh I wish Aurora had a curriculum on this. If you would just let me know, you can type it in the comment box right now. You can type it, you can send me an email to aurora at superchargedscience.com. Um, just let me know. That's how some of our top selling curriculums actually got developed because they were from great ideas from you guys. So for example, marine biology. Some lady called us up one day and said, hey, have you got anything marine biology? And I thought, no, but what a great idea. And so after searching and searching, there's only like one company that has like a 12th grade high school textbook on it, and that's it. So we developed this whole curriculum, uh, now just on marine biology, it's like three, four months long, and even students all the way down to second grade can do it. And so I want your ideas, if there's something that you want to know about, something, some, uh, not just a class, not just an experiment, but a whole curriculum course, of like a deep dive into one topic, what would that topic be? 
And so if you can let me know, that would be fantastic. I really appreciate your feedback because I want to know what it is you want so I can make it so you can have it. So um, anyway, so that's just kind of a, a side note there. We're going to talk about electrostatics. And what's really challenging about teaching electricity to kids, other than the fact that most grown-ups don't know how it works or are terrified of it, just like teaching chemistry, um, that comes up in chemistry a lot, is that when you teach about electricity, it's hard because kids can't see it. They can see the effects, but it's like talking about an invisible kid and trying to describe her, but you have no idea what she looks like. But you can see the effects, right? You can see cookie crumbs on the floor, maybe she's sitting on the couch, maybe you see footprints. You can detect things, but you can't directly see current flowing through wires. You can see the motor going, you can see the light bulb coming on, which makes it a challenge when things don't go right. So it's really easy for kids to get frustrated when they do electricity experiments, and the parents also may not be skilled in that area, so they go, I don't know what's going on, ah, don't ask me. <laughs> the kids are like, but I want this to work, but I don't know how. And, they, and it just is this downward spiral. So let me show you a couple of quick and easy things you can do to teach your kids electricity. Teach them some very basic principles in electrostatics, which is static electricity, which I'll define for you in a minute, and also how you can do this um, beyond today. So um, I'm going to just, again, I mentioned this, these, a couple of experiments are in this book, but there are a lot of great resources out there. Um, we have a whole 2,500 plus videos online in my online school, um, but there are a lot of resources as well in the library and so forth. Um, you've got a lot of great resources and this is one of them. So I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, I'm also going to mention uh, the, uh, when we're done with this, I'm going to talk about some of the secrets to teaching. And uh, they're real simple, really easy to do. I just taught a uh, science adventure with six hours. We had oh, probably like 75, 80 kids and in a gymnasium. It was just me. <laughs> there were not very many helpers, but a lot of parents stepped up. And so I'm going to show you how I did that. And so that's what this is here. Okay, so for electrostatic experiments. Okay, so if you're going to do any experiments with, electro, um, with static electricity, it's got to not be raining. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And so that's frustration number one. So you want to make sure it's a really dry day. If it's not dry, crank up the heaters in your house, dry everything out, dry out the air, because all of those invisible little bits of water that are in the air right now is what is actually taking the charge away and keeping it from accumulating. So you know you've got a bad hair day when it's like super, super dry, right? And you're like scuffing along the carpet and you can go over and touch your cat almost on the nose and zzz, right? That's the kind of conditions we want for these experiments. So they're super simple, super easy. I'm just going to walk you through a couple of them and then give you ideas for more. So easy experiment number one is all you need is a balloon, okay, and a head of hair. Now I happen to have a lot, but unfortunately I didn't quite, my hair, I didn't leave it enough time to dry, so it's still a little wet, so I'm going to show you how it doesn't work, <laughs> and then I'm going to show you what you can do to make it work. So um, you're going to go ahead and you can... <laughs> Okay, get a charge going. <laughs> you see how I can't, it's not even really sticking to the balloon. It's because my hair is wet, okay? Because that water is taking those electrons out of there. Anyway, I didn't mean for that to happen. I just sort of did, but let's use it to learn. <laughs> so anyway, so normally you can scuff, 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 scuff. And this is how I open all my classes in electricity. I'll do this and the kids will be shouting, static electricity, and I haven't even asked a question. And I'll say, okay, great, so that's right, static electricity, what's it mean? And I kid you not, there will be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kids in the audience, and everybody's going to say, nothing. It's going to sound like this. And I'll say, well, come on, you said static electricity, it's a fancy word, what's it mean? Nobody knows what it means. It's pretty rare, once in a while we'll get a kid who honestly understands it, but it's unusual, it's really, really unusual. And here's the thing, a lot of people like to feel great that they can label something and move on. But they don't, they're missing like the main part of what's going on. I don't care if you don't know the definition some guy gave hundreds of years ago. He's not offended. But if you fully understand, say, Newton's laws of physics or Maxwell's principles of electromagnetism and optics, you don't need to know the fancy words or the fancy equations. It just comes naturally because it's intuitive. Um, so anyway, so one of the things we're going to talk about is static electricity. So one of the... Um, one of the questions is, well, how do you teach kids about static electricity? And one of the secrets to teaching is you have to relate the new stuff that you're learning with something that they already understand. For example, if we're talking about water filtration, and I've got a big jug, I'll bring this really stinky, it's horrible, it actually, it smells really bad. 
of swamp monk. And I'll say, hey, we're going to purify this into clear water. And I'll open the, crack open the top, and it just reeks really bad. And the kids are like, well, how are we going to do that? And I say, well, if you're cooking pasta and the timer dings, how do you get the pasta out of the water? And the kids will say, oh, I know, you use a strainer or colander, right? You, set, you do something that has holes that lets the water go through, and you get to keep the solids. Say, okay, well, that's one step of the filtration process we're going to use. So we're using something that they already know, you know, how to strain pasta, with something they may not be familiar with, you know, the, the one of the filtration steps in water purification. Now, by the way, if you want to know how to sp <laughs> purify swamp muck, it's coming out on, in two or three weeks in my summer um, e-camp. So I have an online summer science camp. And for those of you who are already members of e-science, my online science curriculum school, um, you will have access to that this summer for those of you who are members. So that will be something you can do with your kids. And you want to get the grossest water out there to really freak them out. Okay. And uh, so, so we are going to re uh, relate. We're doing electrostatic. So we are relating ele static electricity with something they already know. So what I do is I'll ask them to give me two magnets with their hands. And I'll say, okay, now pretend these are a north and a north. Can you show me? Do they go together? And the kids always do this right. They're like, oh, no, it doesn't quite go together. And I'm like, okay, great. Now show me a plus and a minus. So do this right now. Oh, plus and a minus. They go together. Good. Okay, now, I'm sorry. <laughs> I already messed it up. So here we go. North and a north, right? North and a south. Okay, how about a plus and a plus charge? And I don't even explain it. I've already got the momentum going because I've already, we've already been talking about magnets and they have experience with magnets. So we'll just keep going. We'll say, all right, plus and a plus. And they'll just naturally go like this. And they'll say, oh, it doesn't go together. That's right. And what about a plus and a minus? Yes, they do. And then I'll pull out the balloon and I'll, as I'm rubbing, I will explain how electrons are really easy to pick off and they have a negative charge. And now I've got a whole balloon full of negative charge. So, and then I'll find somebody that's got really good hair. Usually there's like one or two kids. Usually it's straight hair, but not always. And it's really fine. And it's got no goop in it, like no gel or hairspray or anything like that. And, um, and so I'll go up and their hair will like be, like large amounts will be sticking like this. And I'll say, does the balloon, does the hair like the balloon? Some of the kids will actually yell no. <laughs> you kind of look at them funny. And then you say, okay, oh no, it does. It likes the balloon. And why is that? Okay, this is negative. This must be, and they'll say positive. And I was like, that's right. So, uh, so that is a basic, basic understanding of plus and minus. Now, you can do a lot of other things, too. Here, let me move this out of the way for a minute. We're going to use this guy in just a second. So there's a lot of other things. I don't know if you can see the ping pong ball on the table. It's like right there. You see it? Okay, so um, now, as I mentioned, my hair is wet, which unfortunately I didn't think about this before I did class, but I've got another way to do this too. So you can charge up a balloon and you can bring it next to something lightweight and plastic and you can actually get the balloon, the object to move towards it. So this is like 10 balloons going scuff, scuff, scuff. So watch this. So we can just simply pull, um, charge this balloon up whoop, and I can make the ping pong ball. I can chase it all over the table. Now you don't need this stick thing. I'm just using it because my hair is wet. Um, but it works with a balloon too here. So you got to get it stopped, and then you bring the balloon close, 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 and you can get this thing to follow your stick. And the question is why? It's because, you know, just like in the balloon, there, scuff, 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 right? Giant negative charge. Now this has pluses and minuses on it, and they're all balanced, right? There's about an equal number of pluses and minuses. So when you bring this closer, you bring this giant negative thing, all the pluses go, hey, I want to hang out with you. And so just on this side of the ball, there's a bunch of pluses, and that causes the ball to roll. That's also the reason that this sticks to the wall. So I can charge it up, stick it to a wall, and that works because this is giant negative, and all the pluses and minuses in the wall, all the pluses come out, come closer, move a little bit, and this thing sticks to the side of the wall, if you've ever stuck this to a wall. You can do this with scraps of paper, like confetti. You know those hole punches? You can empty those out and put them all over the table and then just bring a charged balloon over close to it and you can see it jump. You can um, put the sink on very little, like it'll just be this thin stream of water and you can bring this close to it and you can see it'll actually spray water everywhere. So there's a lot of really cool experiments you can do to show how you can make things move just using charges, They're not magnets. It's not the same as magnetism, but it's similar enough where you can make that connection so they quickly understand. So there's another experiment that I wanted to show you. You can make a motor. So use your spoon and your yardstick. Okay, it's a very, very small yardstick. So you can see it here. Okay. 
And then you're going to charge up your balloon. Charge, 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 charge. Now I'm going to cheat and use this. Um, okay. And then, I don't know if you can see this, but I can make this thing go all the way around. Do you see that? Round and round and round. And actually, in the, um, on my online science program, you can actually see me use that red balloon. And the, the, uh, the meter stick is you know, three feet long. And, um, or 39 inches long. And it goes round and round. So I can actually cause this thing to rotate. I can not just make the ping pong ball chase it across the table, but I can make things go in a circular motion too. Oh, I've got a helper. Look at this. He's got a helper. He's got a helper. I do need a head of hair. How did you know? All right. You just got a haircut. Oh, there it goes. There it goes with his head. Look at that. Thank you. So this was a perfect demonstration of why, um, of how moisture kills static electricity. There you go. Cool. Thank you. Get it all charged up. Get it all charged up and... There you go. There it goes. Look at that. It actually works better than the little stick did, didn't it? Yeah. Can you make the ping pong bubble? Sure. Okay. Oh, this stick. Oh, this stick is going in. <laughs> Hang on, try that. All right. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Now, if you have bubbles, you can actually blow bubbles and chase them around with a balloon all over your house um, because the bubbles are nice and lightweight and you can um, use static electricity to make the bubbles move. Okay, <laughs> what is it? You can't see it. You can't see it. Oh, was it too low? Here, can we do it one more time? Sure. Here, sorry. Let's move all right, the... here, let's, let's do our... How's that? Smoother. All right. Okay, one more time. All you do is you charge up the balloon. Okay, here. Charge, charge, charge. All right. And here we go. There you go. Do you see how it's going around? You can chase it with the balloon. <laughs> nice. It wants, it wants to, it's attracted to the balloon here. That's right. So if I just move it, I'll keep going with it. And where's the ping pong ball? Here's the ping pong ball. Okay. Right. Charge that up again. And you have great hair. I never realized that about you. You never knew in 20 years that I have great hair? 20, 20 years 20. of being with you. I never knew. Wow. wow, you can make the balloon do all kinds of things. There you go. <laughs> or I'm sorry, you can make the ball do all kinds of things. Okay. Lovely. Thank you. Yay! Okay, this for this next one, you're going to want to be up a little bit. Um, and, so, and just for the record, what? I noticed you had great hair the first day I met you. Oh, uh, you're sweet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Say thank you, Al. Yay, he saved the day. He does have a lot in our relationship, actually. I get myself into all kinds of pickles. He's laughing hysterically right now. Okay, so... <laughs> Alright, so what do I have here? So, I have... Here, let me unhook these. I have, this is called a Wimshurst machine, and the first ones that were made were like, these bla uh, glass plates were like 20 feet high and 20 feet in diameter, and there's two of them, and they counter-rotate. Okay, you see that? And they kind of rotate opposite. When I turn this crank, and basically, it's like having a couple hundred balloons and just going chuk, 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 chuk. only, um, I've got these two um, silver balls, and so on one of them, we're going to have a positive charge buildup, and on the other one is going to be uh, a negative charge buildup. Okay, and so simply by uh, by spinning the plates, get this plate going. This one's a little stuck. There we go. Okay. Okay. And I don't know if you can tell or not, but there is a little bolt of lightning that is right there, and it's going from one to another. So basically, this is what happens when you scuff with your socks on the carpet on a hot, dry day, and you scuff, 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 and you go up to your cat, and you are really close, but you don't touch her on the nose, and the spark goes from you to the cat's nose, right? <laughs> no, don't do that, really. Um, but you get the idea, right? So you you can have a, char a charge buildup, and as soon as it gets within proximity, close enough, then the, like, the static charge will leap to the next thing through the air. This gotta be close enough. And so this is, at this point, a class will say, okay, which kid wants to get shocked? And honestly, there's usually never a shortage. You know, hands are going up, maybe I want to get shocked, and the parents' eyebrows are like, what, are you kidding? 
In fact, I had a woman for the first time ever in, I don't know how many years, 20 years, she came up and she goes, this is dangerous, I do not approve, you may not shock any children. And I said, well, um, you know, it, it, I'm not forcing them if they want to see if it's, a, it's totally safe, nothing bad's going to happen, the amperage is very low, it just feels like a little zing, you know, just like when, you, um, when you're going down a slide, those plastic slides they have nowadays that parents think are a good idea, um, and the kid's hair looks like this, and they come down, and it's, it's just like that. Anyway, so she was very adamant, so I asked her if she would like to go first, and then she didn't talk to me. Um, okay, so <laughs> anyway, so now what we're doing is if we're separating these so there's no chance for the spark to go that far. And I've connected these wires to plastic bottles. These are water bottles with nothing in them. And I've surrounded them with uh, aluminum foil. And these two are nailed down, but this one is on a piece of a coat hanger and it's allowed to spin. Okay, see I can actually take it off. There's like a hole drilled through the bottom and um, it's allowed to spin just like that, okay? But we'll stop it for now. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna make this one become one charge, this one become another charge, and there are these little paper clip things, uh, on one on either side of the bottle. I don't know if you can see them, they're kind of small. Well, there's a paper clip that comes here and comes close but doesn't touch, and the same thing is true on the other side. And so when I spin this, it's gonna make a charge on both sides, and just like you saw with the yardstick, I can get things to move. So this is an electrostatic motor. Okay, and it's just made out of common everyday things. I mean, this thing isn't, but but the uh, the motor itself, right? Anyway, so that's a really cool application of of how you can use pluses and minuses to move stuff. Okay. All right. So I promised to tell you some some secrets about teaching, and let me do that really quick. Oh, by the way, if you want one of these things. Uh, they're called fun fly sticks. You can probably still find them at toy stores. They're really cool. Um, and the other thing is a Wimsource machine. Those are typically at um, science supply stores, like usually for teachers. So if you're a teacher and you go, to, I think it's Size Supply, I think is where we bought ours. Uh, but you can find them. They're around. They're usually between, I don't know, $50 and $150, depending on how nice of a one you want. But they only do one thing, but they do that one thing really good, and they're cool. That's one of the reasons for being a science teacher, so you can have these cool things. Okay, so one of the last things I wanted to show you is how do you, how do you teach science, especially to a group of kids, and suppose they're all at different levels. It's like, well, how do you do that? Okay, so basically, uh, this past weekend, I had, I want to say, 75 or 80? 75 or 80 students that were between the ages of 6 and 15. And they all came from public schools and private schools and home schools and charter schools. And so I had no experience with any of them. But yet I was able to handle them for six hours. And everybody, when they left, had a complete blast. So the question is, how do you do that? So there's a couple of really important things to remember. They're super simple. Grab a pencil. If you, this is important to you and you want to write it down, um, you can use this when you are schooling your own kids if you're a teacher and you want to, or you want to pass this on to your teacher because they need a little help um, or you just want to keep your learning going throughout the summer and you want to keep this going this is great so or you're just curious okay this will take me like two minutes to talk about okay so for example for science adventure day i had a syllabus of all the things i was going to do but you know this is good for keeping on track to make sure we get to everything but what i really did was this this is everything i taught all on one sheet of paper and what I do is, for example, here, we use the one for electricity. Let me come around so I can show you. When I teach a class, I always keep the most important thing in mind, which is when those kids walk out the door, what is it that I want them to know? So for electricity, I want them to know polarity, plus and minus. I want them to know that charge flows through wires and that their wires have to be in a closed loop. That's it. So I'm keeping my eye on the ball. That's my goal. It's just like if you weighed... 200 pounds overweight, what's your goal? My goal is I want to weigh, you know, 135. Okay, so you, you've got that crystal clear. It's really simple, it's easy, it's in the forefront of your mind no matter what you're doing, whether you're eating, whether you're exercising, no matter what you're doing, right? It's always there. So you've got to have that, like, what's your outcome? You know, why are we here on the Saturday for six hours? Why am I giving up my Saturday to hang out with these kids that aren't even mine? Um, and so my goal, I have other personal goals as well, but for that particular class, I want them to know about plus and minus. I want them to know about charge, current, 
and I want them to know about how to troubleshoot in case stuff goes wrong. Because if there's a hundred kids that don't have circuits that work and there's only one of me, it's a nightmare. Trust me, I've been there. So instead, there's a very specific sequence of classes, um, of demonstrations I'll go through that stack so the kids can troubleshoot themselves um, and their own um, circuits. And by the end of class, I'm usually just hanging around just in case somebody has a weird thing that happens. So, and that's... And these are um, the activities that we went through. So that's, that's secret number one. Just have your outcome in mind, whatever it is. Have your destination in mind. you got to begin with the end in mind. Sound familiar? So you can use it in lots of different ways. Uh, for example, I had to step in, um, I think last year, as a fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teacher at a private school. And they were doing, they said, we don't care what you teach, just keep them busy for a, a week. And I wound up teaching there for four months. So... What happened is we couldn't just do science the whole time. For a week, yeah, no problem. But for more than that, I had to think about different things that I wanted them to learn about math and about history and about all kinds of stuff. I'd never taught history before, but suddenly I had no problems because I could take this framework and bring it to different subjects. I taught Renaissance, uh, the Renaissance, and we did it in three days, and it was fantastic. We took a super deep dive. I actually wound up in a Renaissance outfit, and we did um, Da Vinci paintings. We did uh, um, we did some Michelangelo work. We did all kinds of experiential things um, for the kids to really get. And on the last day, the kids had to come in and tell me what was wrong because I set up this Renaissance area, and they had to tell me all the things that were wrong with it because they were already experts about this time period, which was really cool. Um, but anyway, so the, the I had the form I had foremost my mind what I wanted them to get, the two or three things, usually not more than three, that were super important when we did this study. Now this could be for when I taught mechanical engineering, this could be for a 10-week class. I've got those couple of principles that they absolutely must know when we're done. And I've also got the principle or two that we cover when I'm just with them for an hour. So you can carry this idea um, through whatever it is that you're teaching. I also had to teach English and literature, which I personally love, but I've never taught it. But I was able to use this model um, and be super successful at it. And the kids actually entered contests and won, which was amazing. I didn't know they won until after I left. And uh, it was amazing. We also did this, um, did I tell you this about the, liter um, the, uh, the writing letters? So this class totally was, they didn't have a very good experience. And so they were really... Um, really, what's the word, um, they just didn't want to write at all, like ever, just, just just writing wasn't their thing and they would scream and howl if I asked them to. So I thought about it and I thought, you know, I'm going about this wrong. If you don't want somebody to do something, you know, don't tell them to do it because then they'll push even harder, right? So I walked in the next day with a framed, uh, it's over there, I can show you, um, it's, I actually won a writing contest. Actually, one of the first careers I wanted was to be a journalist. So I have a secret, a special place in my heart for journalism and literature. So anyway, so I one time, like 10 years ago, I won an award. So I bring it in and I said, hey, look at this. I won an award. Um, I was wondering, I, I was going to enter this contest again this year. Do you guys want to do it with me? And they, they were kind of curious to like, what do you mean? What kind of an award? And I said, well, it's a writing contest. And half the kids right then said, no. And the other kids were like, maybe. Like you won. If she won, pff, I could do it. And so I said, well, the, the rules are very simple. You can only, you have to write a story, but it can't be any more than 55 words. You know, if you have 56 words, it's disqualified. So immediately everybody's like, hang on, 55 words, no problem, right? And so um, I didn't even have to say anything else. I just said, hey, look what I did. I won an award, we're gonna enter a contest, it's free, no more than 55 words. Kids were crazy for it, it was really funny. And I said, you can write about anything you want. And the funniest part is how long they spent on that assignment. They spent longer than they'd ever spent on anything else because apparently doing a story in 55 words is really challenging because 55 words isn't that many. And so, in fact, we, I got a couple of upset letters from parents saying, hey, <laughs> could you assign an easier task next time? Like my kid is spending all their time and they're so frustrated because they have like 57 words. So anyway, long story short, they all had amazing essays. And then following that, on the heels of that one, I came in and I said, hey, let's write letters. And they're like, no way. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, come on. Let's write letters. I'll be your pen pal. You write to me. So I wrote everybody a letter. They had to write back. And so we did that for a little bit. And then I said, tell you what, now let's write a letter to your favorite restaurant. And you have to convince me it's the best restaurant. And so they could pick any restaurant they wanted. And this was the funniest part. And so they all picked different restaurants, right? Some people had sushi, some people had pizza. And it was, it was uh, one kid had smoothies, one kid picked donuts. 
So, um, and they had to write a persuasive letter to me about um, why their restaurant was the best. Now, what they didn't know is um, at the end, when they were ready to turn them in, I said, no, 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 I don't want them. Seal them up and we're sending it to the restaurant. And they were a little skeptical, like, okay. <laughs> Most of them didn't know how to address an envelope, so that was good too. So they sent them in. And then at that time period, it was actually time for me to transition out for and another teacher to come in. And the following month, apparently five or six of them out of, I think, 16, actually had visits from um, vis either visits to the school. Uh, one kid did a pizza parlor, and the pizza, the pizza place was so touched by his letter, they provided pizza for the entire school. And it's not that big of a school, but it's a big, big school. And, um, and so the, um, I think two, three, or four of them had gift certificates for free meals for their entire family next time they visited. Uh, one kid got smoothies delivered. <laughs> one kid had the, with the donuts, had donuts show up at class. <laughs> so, so the director wasn't quite sure how to handle this. And anyway, it worked out really well. But long story short, I knew my outcome. I wasn't, it was, it was like my outcome was the most important thing. How I got there, I'm flexible. You know, it, I do whatever it takes to get the kids flowing. So my outcome was they need to write. <laughs> so I'll do whatever I need to in order to make that happen for them. So anyway, I share that with you. Sorry, this went a little bit long, but those are some of my secrets for teaching. Now, I'm not the end all. There's a lot of stuff I don't know yet, which is great, and I'm still learning, and I'm really excited about that. But if there's anything that I've said that resonates that you can use, I encourage you to use that as well. Um, for those of you who have ideas for what you'd like subject-wise, what kind of content, what kind of curriculum you'd like to see in the future, I want to hear from you. That's how we have aviation now. We have civil engineering. We have chemical engineering. Um, renewable energy, we just did that one again. We have holograms, because that was new, lasers and holograms. We also have astronomy, black holes, astrophysics, um, and marine biology. And so those were all suggestions from you folks. So I want to hear from you. What is it that you really want content-wise that you look out there and you can't find it? So let's make it. I would love to create that uh, curriculum for you. So, all right, so I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We're going to make spectrometers and talk about light and show you how you can unmix white light into its rainbow and how you can actually tell what, um, or we'll talk about how astronomers tell what different elements are burning inside of a star just by looking at sunlight. And you'll be able to make, you're gonna make a little scientific instrument. You're gonna need a cardboard tube, like a, what do you call it, um, paper towel tube, and a CD and um, just some tape and scissors. Real simple stuff, but you can actually make a scientific instrument. So I will see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock at this, so the same time that we started today, 10 o'clock Pacific. Um, I'll see you around 10 o'clock and I'll see you then. Thanks so much, bye.